Okay, we're solving trig equations. This is day two of solving trig equations. And a lot of times they end up looking like this. Sine squared plus one. Nope, they don't. Minus one equals zero. And then you solve it from there. Well, what are you supposed to do? Factor. Would you please show me that you know how to factor this by now? And if you don't, I'll show you how in a minute. But factor that puppy. Now, there's the easy way and the hard way. And there's a lot of times there's a really clearly easy way that you can do a problem compared to the hard way. In this case, I would say there's two methods that are comparable, but some people will like one better than the other. I'm going to show you the two ways. One way is to say, you know what that's like? That's like x squared minus 1, and I'm just going to factor that x plus 1 and x minus 1. And then I'm going to solve that. I mean, isn't it kind of cheating to just take the sign out of there? Yeah, it is kind of cheating. But it's called a, a substitution. And basically, I've let x equal sine of theta. And technically, you're supposed to write that, but I would allow you to do it without writing that. Basically, all I did is change sine squared to x squared. And then I can just solve the problem like that. And it'll be uh, x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0, and then this one's x equals negative 1, and this is x equals positive 1. How many of you like that way better? All right, and you can do it that way. The only problem is that now you have to pay the piper. You made it easier to do, but now you've got to substitute back in and say x is really sine of theta, right? So at the very end, you throw in sine of theta equals negative 1. And x is sine of theta, because they're right here. So this is sine of theta equals 1. And from there, you're going to still have to go through that process of figuring out where is sine negative 1 and where is sine 1. And if you realize, wait a minute, if I can't make a triangle where the hypotenuse is the same size as the other side, you realize you're on a quadrantal. Both of these are quadrantals. Please find the two quadrantal answers here. iPhones, I know they're not being used, but put them away, please. You'll see somebody with their iPhone out. You're going to lose it soon if you don't put it away. All right. So since we can't draw a triangle like this, then we have to figure out where we are. And to do that, I would go sine is y. So this is really saying y is negative 1. Where is y negative 1? This is the y-axis. So where's y negative 1? Down there. So it's this part. And so that's 3 pi over 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. And then this one is positive 1. Y is positive 1. This is the y axis. Where's y positive 1? Right there. And so that's pi over 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. Now, you remember me saying there's another way to solve this problem? Okay. Well, there's another way to solve it this way. I didn't have to simplify it. I could have used sine x and sine x right away in my factoring. Raise your hand if you did it that way. Okay, and that's totally okay. Either way is fine. It's just that by the end, you've got to get the sign back in there. You can't just end with x equals negative 1. If you do the substitution thing, you can't just end there. You've got to substitute it back in and do sine equals negative 1, and then do the whole trig thing and find the answers. Okay, that is a typical easy one. All that's going to happen today is the factoring is going to ramp up. So the problems are going to look more like this. 2 sine, don't write this down, just watch for a second. Say minus 3. Just go like this. And instead of x, we should use the same variable, theta. Okay, 
Don't write this down, but that's a typical type of question for today. Now, it looks really complicated, but I can simplify it down really quick. 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Do you get that that's just back to algebra? Now it's just algebra. Factor it. Would you try that one? See if you can factor it all the rest of the way. You get 2x and x, all right? And who's got it? What was it? 2x plus 3. Plus 3. Minus 1. Now how can you know you're right? How can you be confident? First outside, inside, last? What's the first make? What's the outside make? What's the inside make? What is positive 3x and minus 2x make? Aha! Uh -huh. All right, thank you. See why I checked, though? You know, because it. I know you're you're one of my better students in here, but you're, you know, like anybody else, you can make a dumb mistake, so I was double-checking you. And then the lasts would make negative 3. So when we got the opposite of what we wanted, we changed the signs. Now, who's confident that that one's right? Okay, I think it is, too. All right. So, are we done? No. We got to finish solving this puppy. Just like in algebra or in higher algebra, you would have to solve this the rest of the way. So we got to say x plus 1 equals 0, and we got to say 2x minus 3 equals 0, and solve them down. Go ahead and do that. Get it solved all the way to the end. Do you agree it's x equals 3 halves and x equals negative 1? Okay. Now, it's sort of like you've been avoiding something this whole time. And now you've got to come back and deal with it. What have we been avoiding this whole time? The trig. The sign. So, now is the time when you just substitute it back in. This was really sine the whole time. So, it's sine of x and sine of y. Or, sorry, sine of x and sine of x. And now, there are two little problems where you have to try to figure out, you know, what they are. And I want you to think for a second. Would you agree 3 over 2 is like 1.5? Before you beat your brain against that for too long, can sine ever get as high as 1.5? Think about it on the graph. What's the highest it ever goes? So how's it going to get to be sine, get to be 1.5? It can't. So, what's the answer to the left side? Extraneous or no solutions. Usually extraneous is where I have an answer and then the answer doesn't work. So I'd rather say no solutions. Okay, and then the other side though, you can do that. That's one of those, you can't draw a triangle for it, so it's a quadrantal. And then if it's a quadrantal, we know it's sine is y, right? So y is negative 1. This is where y is, and this is where y is negative 1. It's down there. And so it looks to me like it's 3 pi over 2. Raise your hand if you had the same thing as I did. Okay, good. So basically, it was just a little more complicated factoring problem. Anytime you see something squared... And then something not squared, and then a number, you should be thinking, ah, that's probably one of those factoring times. Here's another one. It's got something squared, it's got something not squared, but it doesn't have a number. It still can be factored. Everybody try to factor that. Sine of theta minus sine of theta. Sorry, sine squared minus regular sine. 
It can be factored. You get sine theta to come out. And then you'd have sine theta minus 1. Now, for those of you that were having trouble doing that, for those of you that got that right away, that's the way to go. For those of you that are like, oh, I didn't know what to do, then I recommend you do that substitution thing. That substitution thing is pretty powerful. They have a whole name for it in calculus called U substitution. They do this in calc all the time. Something's too complicated, you substitute in part of the function as just a U. And you work it out with the U until you get all done, and then you substitute it back in. That's basically what we're doing, except I've been using an X. So I'm going to go X squared minus X equals 0. And if it's easier for you to do that and then factor it, oh, yeah, X comes out of it, and I have X minus 1. And then get the answers. X minus 1 equals 0. X equals 1. And this one also needs an answer. X equals 0. Um, some people get confused by those, but this, there's got to be two answers. It's a quadratic. It's got a squared. And this thing on the outside is an x, so it can be made equal 0, 2. There's my two answers. Can I just be done? No. I've been avoiding something this whole time. I've been avoiding the trig. So what do I have to substitute back in now? Sine. So then I go sine x and sine x. Would you please find me the answers? And there might be four this time. Or maybe only three. Or maybe two. Or maybe only one answer. That's one of the things that's complicated about these. It's hard to know how many you get. But you can have as many as two answers for each little trig equation. So there might be four answers. That work. Can't draw a triangle for that, so I guess I better find the quadrantal. Hmm, sine's y, so this is on the y. Where is y zero? If this is the y-axis, where is y zero? Uh, there and there. There's two answers for that, isn't there? Two spots where y is zero. And so would that be, uh, let's see, well this one over here for sure is pi. Uh, that one, should I call it zero or two pi? Zero. Because our answers always have to be between 0 and 2 pi, and 2 pi always gets left out. It can't be 2 pi because it can be 0, and they act the same. It's like 0 and 2 pi are kind of the same, so you can't do both of them. So we always go with 0 and not 2 pi. Okay, so 0 and pi were the answers for that one. Over here, sine is equal to 1. That's where y is 1. Y is 1 right there, so that one's pi over 2. Only one answer for that one. So pi and 0 and pi over 2. Three answers this time. Raise your hand if you had it right. Good. It's a good sign. Okay. So now, what else could we do? Well, you remember how we substituted in some things like sine squared is the same as 1 minus cosine squared? You can still do that on this kind of problem. So let's say for a minute that we had... Um, 1 minus cosine squared x uh, times uh, tangent of x is equal to 0. Right away when you see 1 minus cosine squared, you should be thinking, okay, there's a fact about sine, and sine squared and stuff. I'm going to write it off to the side. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And then you can rearrange it in your head and go 1 minus the cosine, put that over here. Oh, that's sine. That's sine squared. I should probably stick with the x since I started with an x. And then tangent, couldn't I put that in? Tangent is really what over what? Sine over cosine. But I don't need to do that. This is where like being smart about this stuff comes in. You could put in sine over cosine, but now you've got two functions instead of one. You get how that's not good? 
I'd rather just have one. I'm going to leave it as tangent. Because our goal here is not to try to get it down to only one function. Our goal is to try to get it simple. So this is simple and that is simple so that I can set this equal to zero and then I can set this equal to zero. And I get two answers. Even though they're different functions, it's totally okay. So now I got two answers. One is where is sine squared equal to zero and where is tangent equal to zero? One thing at a time. I gotta solve this. It is not alone yet. Sine squared equals zero. It's not solved. Remember I said before, if you can factor it, you should. Sine squared can be factored. Sine times sine. Do you get that? Do you get really then? That all we really care about? These are going to be identical to each other, right? So all we really care about is, is sine theta equal to zero. So now we got two things to solve. Solve that and solve that. Their answers are like pi over 2 or undefined or 3 pi over 2 or that kind of thing. Hope you, can, you realize you can't draw triangles if they're equal to 0. The sides of 0 on triangles don't work so good. Okay, try these two. See if you can get the answers. Maybe there's four answers. Maybe there's no answers. I think it's good for you to be able to compare with a kid, even if it's just to see that they don't get it too. <laughs> but if you both don't get it, raise your hand and I'll help. I'd like you to compare with the person sitting across from you this time. I'm going to have you go. Um, let me do this. You two are going to compare with each other. And then from here on, you guys compare. Okay. And then your two rows are going to compare with each other, but you're going to go diagonal like this. Diagonal. Diagonal, diagonal, and then you two, and you two. And then, whew, sorry about that. My bad. It's white. I couldn't see it at all. Okay, uh, you two, you two, you two, you two, and then you two. We're going to compare with each other. Okay? I'm pausing for a second while you do that. Okay, so I think people have compared. For the people at home, how would I do this? Sine is equal to zero. Well, I can't draw a triangle, so I know it's a quadrantal. Then I go sine is y. I'm doing a lot of sine problems. If it had been cosine, what would these all be? Instead of sine being y, we'd be saying cosine is x. And if it had been tangent, which it is in a second, it'll be y over x. All right, so back to sine is y. y is zero, so where is y equal to zero? Here's the y-axis. Where is y equal to zero? That spot and that spot. And so the two answers would be what? Zero for this, very good, not two pi, and what? Pi. Zero and pi. Raise your hand if you had those right. Okay, good. On to the other side. Tangent. Tangent is y over x. So if this is y over x, we need y over x to come out to zero. It's like zero over, and it doesn't really matter what x is. X could be anything. Because as long as y is zero, dividing it by anything, it doesn't matter. Okay, so where is y equal to zero? Here and here is where y is equal to 0. So basically, it's the same thing, right? Okay, and that would be 0 and pi again. All right, the real mind benders will come out like this. Th this, one, this one wasn't that hard. It was just 0 and pi. But what happens when this one, let's say we had solved this equation, and I got an answer here and here, and I solved this answer, and I got an answer here and here, but then these answers right here, which are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, if you had a problem that gave you those answers, you can't list it as an answer to the problem because tangent at that angle would have crashed. So whenever you have tangent in your problem, because see, tangent's the only one that can crash. You can't crash sine, and you can't, can't, can't crash cosine. But tangent, since it's y over x, it's got something on the bottom, it can crash. So tangent, you have to watch out for. And you have to make sure that any answer you got over here also works in your tangent problem because 
You can't say it's an answer to this whole question if when you put the angle in here, it crashes tangent. And what crashes tangent? These two spots. So you've got to watch out for pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 when it comes to tangent because it'll crash tangent. But that's like the super high-end hard stuff to know when we're not there yet. But I like to preview it. So it's surveys, not surveys, studies show that it helps. Okay, so uh, I'd like to just do some of your worksheet together with you then. So we'll spend some of the time that you have left. I'll do some with you. Everybody find the worksheet for today, which is called uh, Trig Solving Trig Equations Day 2. Okay, so here it is. And you may recall that I said there's going to be a lot of factoring on this one, and there is. This very first one is an example of one. And it's an example of one where it's a different, there's, there's like it's cosine squared and sine, and they aren't the same. And it's really hard to get it to factor unless they're the same. And so you need to do a swap. Wherever you see cosine squared, you should be thinking, oh, I know there's, a, there's an identity for that. And then you go and you write the identity. Don't try to just do it from memory because you won't probably do it right. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So then you say, what is cosine? Um, cosine, if I move this over here, 1 minus sine squared. Cosine is 1 minus sine squared. Okay. So then I can put that in right there. And I'll have 1 plus sine equals 2 times 1 minus sine squared. Now, let's just multiply it out. 2 times the 1 makes 2. 2 times the negative sine squared makes negative 2 sine squared. Now, to be able to factor it, it would be nice if it was all on one side and equal to 0. So I'm going to move this stuff over to this side. And that over to this side. So this negative 2 sine squared is going to become positive 2 sine squared on this side, plus the sine x that was already there. And then last, I'll put the number. This 1 gets combined with a negative 2, because that's 2 is moving to the other side, so it becomes negative 2. That makes minus 1 equals 0. All that worked just so I could now have to factor the problem. Now I'm going to make your life a little bit better. Part C here all boils down to, do you remember what sine of 2x is? What is it? Do you have it memorized? 2 sine cosine. So that problem would be really easy. Now you just have to see what makes sine 0 and what makes cosine 0. Because remember, when you got any two things multiplied, that's got to equal 0, and that's got to equal 0. So you just set cosine theta is 0, and sine theta is 0, and you solve two little trig problems. So I'm going to have you skip that problem, as long as you remember that sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. That will give us more room to work on part A. Now this, I personally am one of those people who likes to do it with just x. So I'm going to say this is 2x squared plus x minus 1. I personally think this is easier because I don't have to worry about the word sign like 32 times. I can just wait till the end and slap it in then. All right, now technically I'm supposed to say let x equal sine of theta, okay, but, or sine of x. But I'm not going to do that because I don't have room on my paper right now. So. I'm kind of copying out, but I'm just telling you that the official thing is to say let x equals whatever. Now, I'm going to factor this puppy, 2x and x. And is it plus 1 or minus 1 at the beginning here? I'm not sure. I know it's a 1 and a 1. I'm going to just check. I'm going to think I'm going to try it as plus. How will I know if I'm right? Outside and inside. The outside and the inside make negative x. Dang, it's the opposite. So I can change this to plus, change this to minus. There we go. There. I'm not done yet, though. i got to factor 
I got to finish this puppy and say x plus 1 equals 0 would make x equal negative 1. And this one, x 2x minus 1 equals 0. I'd add 1 to both sides and have 2x equals 1, and that'd be x equals 1 half. Can I just be done right there? I got two answers. Nope, because why? It needs to be solved. I got to substitute x back in for what? Sine x. Sine x. Sine x. That one I have memorized. I told you it would come up like 500 times. Sine of what is a half? 30 degrees, also known as pi over 6. Good. But there's another one. There's another spot where sine is positive. All students take calc. It's also positive over in here. So yeah, if there's a pi over 6 right there, then the whole angle up to here must be 5 pi over 6. Good. And sine is equal to negative 1. We've done that like three times in our practice today. So if you don't know where that is, draw it out, figure it out. You'll, you'll recognize it. Okay. This next one just needs a whole bunch of like distributive. Just multiply this puppy out. Notice there is no quadratics in it at all. There's no squareds. So there isn't going to be much to do. You're just going to have to solve it down. It'll be like tangent is equal to 1 or tangent's equal to 2, or something like that. So this should be an easy one. This one, it's got a squared in it. It makes me think it probably wants to be factored. All right. But I can't think of how I could factor that. Hmm. Is it possible you still have to solve it? Yeah, it is. What if I can't factor it and I'm supposed to solve it? You normally use a quadratic formula on those. There's another way. I'll show you. I add 3 to both sides. We're doing part D here. And I'll have 4 cosine squared x equals 3. You see where I'm going with this? Now I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. And cosine squared is 3 fourths. How do I get rid of squared? What's the opposite of squared? Undoes squared. Square root. Now if I do square root on both sides, I'll end up with cosine of x is equal to the square root of 3 fourths. But I just did the square root of a variable. Shame on me. When you do the square root of a variable, you use the absolute value of this, which you can fix by doing a plus and minus on that. I'm almost done. One of those two can actually be done. Square root of 3 or square root of 4? Which one? Square root of 4. So really, the square root of 3 over 4 is the same as the square root of 3 over 2. Does that ring a bell? Do you recognize those numbers as coming from a triangle? The 1, 2, root 3 triangle? You remember that one? Now, plus and minus means you got to do it twice. Once with plus, once with minus. So really, this breaks up into cosine of x is equal to positive root 3 over 2. And cosine of x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. And I got one set of pictures for this, because those are the places where cosine's positive, and none set of pictures for this, places where cosine's negative. All students take calc cosine's positive uh, there and there, so I, I can get rid of those spots. And then these would be the opposite. So I'm going to have four answers for this puppy. Wow. This is what makes pre-calc challenging class. It's not impossible. Each of these little steps is actually easy. It's just there's so many steps. All right, I'm going to pause for a second and let people kind of catch up. If you're done with that already, awesome. Just keep on moving down the worksheet. 
Okay, I looked through it a little bit, and I think I'm going to have you skip a few to make this a reasonably sized assignment. I'm going to have you skip CGI. We already skipped C. And then we're going to skip G, and then I. Isn't that what they say for uh, in, in films? CGI is like the what they're using to generate. Isn't it something like computer-generated interface? Or I don't know. It's, it's something like that. It's what they say for movies nowadays when they do their special effects. They're a lot of times CGI. Anyway, you're skipping C, G, and I. All right. Um, let's look at N as in Nancy. Get to N. I'll do this one more with you. See how it's cosine on one side and sine on the other? It's really best if you can get them all the same function. So, we got this memorized yet? What's cosine the same as? Who can just say it if you know it? 1 minus sine squared. Good. So, what on earth does it mean to say 1 minus sine squared equals 1 minus sine? I don't know. It doesn't mean anything really profound. It isn't ready to be done yet because it isn't set equal to zero. So I move this junk. I personally am going to move this to the other side this way. Why? Because I want my lead term, my squared one, to be positive. Way easier to factor something when the lead term is positive. So I'm going to move both of those over. And this becomes positive sine squared over here. And a minus 1. And the minus 1 will cancel off this 1. There we go. So 0 equals negative. Oh, I really should rewrite that. 0 equals sine squared. So the lead term's positive. Minus sine x. And then, if you can factor it, you should. Once you got it factored, it won't be hard at all. You'll have two things. And then you set them both equal to 0. And you'll probably get four answers. Maybe two, maybe three. Remember a snappy saying about secants and tans? The one, what was that again? The one with the tan is what we seek, and therefore secant is really 1 plus tangent squared. So you want to get them all to be the same function. So get them all to be tangents or all to be secants. Personally, I'd want them all to be tangents in that problem. Remember also, if you get an answer, on a tangent problem, tangents like should be a red flag. If it's a red, if it's tangent problem, you know that it can't be certain angles. Tangent crashes two spots. Tangent crashes here and here because tangents y over x, and those are spots where x is zero. So just watch out for tangents. If there's ever a tangent in your problem. There might be something that would crash. One of your answers might crash your problem. So you got to throw it out as extraneous. Okay, so we got about 15 minutes left. The rest of the time is yours to ask me questions. Uh, and that's all I have for today.